Welcome back to Nad and Tobago. I'm Hamo Ramson. Thank you again for inviting us into your homes. And we're coming to you live from the Crown Plaza Hotel. And the reason we're here, well, the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce, they're hosting the annual post-budget panel discussion. And buzzing with activity, the hall is actually filled almost to capacity. A number of key business personalities are already in attendance. Uh, some of the presentations this morning, tax incentives for stimulating new investments, implications for productive labor force, Initiatives for deepening the social cohesion, moving the economy into positive growth. A feature speaker, well, the feature speaker this morning is none other than the Minister of Finance, Senator Larry Hawaii. Yesterday, he presented the much-anticipated budget, stimulating economic activity. He presented a budget, an expenditure profile of $58 billion, the largest <coughs> ever presented before this country. This morning, we had a senior member of Cabinet on set with us. He's saying that they will account, and while it's the largest budget ever, the country will see the rewards. There will be accountability, transparency, and growth and development for all. We're looking specifically at what's happening in Tobago. <coughs> Tobago received a significantly larger chunk of the budget than they did last year. Well, all of this is interestingly timed with the THA lectures, which the People's Partnership government has mixed no words in this matter. They've made it absolutely clear they are going after the THA. But taking all of the politics aside and looking at the structure for internal self-governance, the THA and that of central government, the people of Tobago, are their issues really being addressed? Are they part of the development agenda? We see what's happening in Trinidad. A number of industrial estates, a number of plans were put forth before the people of Tobago. How far have they really reached? Well... We're going to continue, David, at our discussion. How far have they really reached? And, you know, Tobago has always been uh, somewhat left behind. We see the, all of the developments. The, we look outside. Major buildings, infrastructure development. Yet Tobago seems to be frozen in time. <laughs> frozen in time. I think Tobago, Tobago has had the opportunities. We just not, have not made good use of them. Um, and again, an opportunity is being presented to us to do a lot of development. Um, and it, we have to focus on getting value for money. I think the minister keyed on a lot of issues in his budget presentation on getting value for money, accountability, implementation, along all those lines. And I think we have to be focused on that in becoming a, a key contributing partner in the country. Getting value for money. Do you think Tobago has been getting value for money? Oof. Not really, no. We've taken a long time to build a lot of things, to get a lot of things on stream. The, the hospital has taken a, good, a great deal of time. Uh, the library is still not completed after a certain amount of time. So we, we've not been effective in getting things done. And how do we change that? How do we ensure that in 2012, 2013, uh, this period is not the same as maybe the last year? Accountability, implementation planning. But if the same people who have been charged with the responsibility of doing that didn't do it properly last year, can we have faith this year around? Um, we'll have to put measures in place to get things done. Accountability and transparency seems to be the key words that a number of persons uh, who appeared on this set this morning are uh, addressed. As it relates to Tobago, do you think there's accountability and transparency? There can always be more of it. And it has to be more of it. No. Stakeholder consultation, looking at Tobago, what do you think would be your immediate recommendations to the THA? Explain that question. Well, if you had to look at the manner in which uh, they have been spending money, the projects in which they have prioritized, what do you think are the key areas that need to be addressed right now, as of today? I would like to see them focus on upgrading our tourism plan, the forts, the different areas that supply tourism. Um, we have the nature walks, Little Tobago, the facilities that um, supply the glass bottom boats, the beach facilities. All these things need to be upgraded, made more user friendly, uh, possibly with a view to creating inflows. With a view of creating inflows. Now we just have about a minute or two till we wrap this interview, David. Tobago, the hotel room, the quality of uh, uh, hotel stock that we have. Uh, recently, the government opened the Magdalena, or the Magdalena was uh, opened its doors. But comparing that to the sandals and the exotic resorts that you have in Anguilla, in Grenada, and St. Lucia, can we really compete? What are we competing in? Tourism is a very broad aspect. And if you, as Minister indicated, there's uh, a drive towards sport, uh, there's a drive towards environment, eco, 
we have to focus and decide on what is necessary. Is it that we want four, five star and six star resorts or do we want four star, five star hotel accommodation supplies a different niche group? And how do we know what we should? I mean, we can want something, but sometimes it doesn't necessarily fit best into uh, what we can even provide. Well, we have to review what we've been good at and focus on what, what do you think we've been good at? That's hard for me to describe, not being directly involved in the tourism business, but we've been very strong in the European and Scandinavian markets uh, and the environment tourism. Right? Um, I don't know the precise numbers to say how key they are. Uh, I think we should move towards family tourism as well. Moving towards family tourism, David, your closing comments is Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago, we need to look closely at getting effective spend for the money i am as a trend as a national i'm concerned about the budget deficit but we always need to take risk in ourselves in going forward and i think the minister has made a, a brave bold step forward uh, um the timelines in recovering and the way we're going to recover i'm not too sure about but it's a it's, it's a strong move the timelines were recovering deficit Tobago. What exactly is in store for the development plans for our sister isle? Uh, we're coming to you live from the Crown Plaza Hotel and the reason we're here, well, Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce, they're hosting their post-budget panel. It's starting at exactly 8 a.m. and we'll continue our broadcast uh, into the ballroom here at the Crown Plaza Hotel. If you have any questions that you would like to pose before our panel, and the panel does include the Minister of Finance, please send it to www.facebook.com slash TTC CIC, or you can send your questions via BBM, the number 21876 7F0. I'm Hamer Ramsu, and I'll see you on the next side of this break. <laughs>